synopsis of myself. Um, my name is Michael Mickey William Jr. Um, I'm born and raised in Atlanta City, New Jersey. Um, since the age of 16 to the age of 38, I struggled with all types of drugs. Found myself in um, Richmond, New Jersey. I was addicted to crack cocaine. I was addicted to heroin. I was suicidal. My wife had a restraining order against me. I don't know why she did that. But anyway, <laughs> I was sitting there and I basically thought my life was basically completely out of control. So uh, I sat there that day and something inside of me just, um, uh, I didn't know it then, but I know it now, that my purpose inside of me basically got me to get up and try one more time. Somebody say, one more time. One more time. <laughs> so I got up that day and I went to Burger Regional Medical Center. Um, at the Burger Regional Medical Center, I came to the great Wilmington Salvation Army. <laughs> so I came through the Salvation Army, so I'm not only talking to you as someone who has been successful, I'm talking to you as if I'm talking to myself. So I won't judge you, I won't do any of that. I'm just here simply to encourage you, okay? I came here, I didn't successfully complete, she kicked me out, breaking rules. Somebody say breaking rules. Breaking break rules. Rule. And I used to try to go to her husband and get passed, but she don't even, you know, you're like, I don't want to deal with her, let me go to him. You know, but I got kicked out in any way. Uh, left here, I went to a place called America's Kenton County University near Town River. I uh, was successfully completed that program after eight months. I went home. Um, I went home since then. I uh, went home to go clean up the church. God told me to go home and clean up the church. Pay attention to small details. I went home and I cleaned up the church. And um, since that day, I'm an eight-time published author. Good God, man. Um, I'm a substance abuse counselor intern for Cumberland County. Um, obviously, my wife, my marriage has been restored. And our primary purpose is to teach men or women how to make the minor adjustments that are necessary in their lives, which will allow them to obtain and maintain a productive lifestyle after incarceration and or rehabilitation. Our motto is anywhere but backwards. Everybody say anywhere, anywhere. but backwards. Say anywhere, anywhere. but backwards. Say anywhere. And I got that. When y'all leave today, if y'all don't remember anything, I need y'all to remember anywhere, anywhere but back. Come on, y'all. I, I don't come here to play games with the enemy. I, I don't war against men and women in the flesh. I war against in the spirit. So I came here to encourage you and tell you that all you got to do is focus on going anywhere. I got that from Jeremiah 7.24, the Bible, <coughs> Jeremiah 7.24. It says, yet they did not obey and incline their ear to me, but they followed the counsel of their own hearts, and they kept going backwards instead of forward. Everybody say anywhere. Anywhere. But backwards. But backwards. Y'all going to hear that a lot. <laughs> by, by the eight weeks, the ones that's going to stay, be here, by the eight weeks, you're going to have to know that. You ain't going to have to know the scripture. You're going to have to know anywhere but backwards in this. Everybody say, to attain my sobriety is easy. To attain my sobriety is easy. Our challenge is to maintain. To maintain. To attain our sobriety is easy. To attain our sobriety is easy. Our challenge is to maintain. The reason why I say that, that's in the mission statement. If you have the book, look at page five. If you have the book in the mission statement on page six, I'm sorry, on page six, it says the word obtain means to come into the possession of something. But the word maintain means to keep it in existence. And the reason why I use those two words is because most of us, if you're like me, we put a lot of effort and emphasis on getting off of drugs. But that's not the challenge. The challenge is Come on, I need participation. You gotta say something. Come on. To maintain. So the, to, the, to 
obtain your sobriety, that's the easy part. We can just come to the Salvation Army two or three, four times, get our sobriety. The challenge is to maintain it, to keep it in existence. So I don't want to spend any time talking about getting sobriety. We already obtained that. Our challenge is what? Maintain. It's going to be a beautiful way, man. I'm going to give you everything I've got. I'm going to tell you everything that I did. I'm going to take y'all each week. This week is simply an introduction. Then after that, we're going to go into another topic, another topic. Every week we have a different topic. This particular week is simply an introduction. Let me read something for you. Y'all all right? All right. <laughs> I love what I do. I love what I do. And I love to encourage individuals. Let me tell you one of the purposes of the Mind Adjustment Program. The purpose of this program is to get individuals like yourselves, get you, bring you with us, make you a minor adjustment facilitator, put you in your same community, create a group in your community, and instead of you tearing down your community, you're now building it up. Try. So our purpose is to try to get you inspired that you want to help somebody else and then get you go right back in your community and help build it up. But first, you have to be willing to go anywhere. Come on, give yourself a round of applause. I'm going to read something. This is not in your particular book. A new start. Somebody say a new start. A new start. Doesn't a new start sound great? <clears throat> when life becomes difficult, you have failed several times. You have messed up a perfect relationship, and you are bored of your job, your house, your friends, and your family. A new start sounds exciting. When we find ourselves stuck in mediocrity of life, do you know what Jesus did on the cross 2,000 years ago enables you to have a new start even now? Though many believers know this truth, they still live beneath, beneath this truth every day because somehow the lie of the old life seems to envelope their souls. The fact is, the enemy of our soul knows if he can keep us looking back, we will make no progress in the future God has for us. Anybody say anywhere but backwards? <laughs> we all have past, and for some, it may be memorable. For others, it may be horrible. Good God Almighty. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> For some of us, you might be remembering the good stuff. Some of us, it was hard. Whatever the past looks like, the enemy majors in causing us to indulge in what was. We serve a God that loves to plan ahead for his children. And the scriptures tells us that his plans are always good in the end. Jeremiah 29, 11. As a minister, I am afforded the opportunity to minister to many people from young to old, mature, immature, strong, and weak. But I recognize, but what I recognize is from the least to the greatest, the most common issue among them all is letting go of their past. No matter where I go, everybody want to focus on Anywhere. I spent, or should I say, wasted a lot of time and energy on what was and what could have been. But I am grateful for the present and the bright future that God has for me, watch this, and you too. I want to encourage you to take your time through this program and to commit to stop looking back on the negatives in your life. Our memory is not the enemy, but the way we use our memory is. When I look back on my life, it is for only moments of seeing what God did and how he understands and how he has brought me thus far. As you journey with my wife and me, I want you to understand that a new start is available to you no matter where you've been or what you have done. Jesus died to save and give you a brand new start. Somebody say a new start. New start. Jesus specialized in new beginnings. And now I look 
at every disappointment, every hurt, every pain as an opportunity to birth something new. We do ourselves great injustice and we lock God out when we keep looking back negatively. We are made to move forward and it's time to stop looking back. Everybody say anywhere but back. Anywhere but back. Give me a second round. And then um, we're going to do an introduction, page 15. Page 15. This is the introduction week. I'm just letting y'all know we're going to go through this uh, uh, session and then next week we have another session. And again, everybody who's going to be here for the eight weeks, thank God. But the ones who aren't, I still want you to get what you can and I'm going to pour into you. And you can always participate. You can ask questions. Y'all all will have this book. And this book is many questions in there. You're not, it's not a right or wrong answer. I wrote this book when, when someone asked me, a prosecutor asked me, he read my book and he said, when I read it, 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 it seems like you wrote it from a point of you being inside here. And that's exactly how I wrote the book. So these questions in here are questions, you're going to have your own book. Next week, everyone will have it. But these questions is in here, when you're doing your devotion or whatever you're doing around here, sit down and write in the books. Because what happened is, you can learn when I got out, I learned how far I came by what I wrote. When I see what I wrote before, I'm like, I wouldn't even think like that, man. Like, man, I was that far off? So the questions that are for you, it's not for my wife and I to check in and see if you're doing it, because if you don't put nothing in, I can't help you anyway. You can only eat the food you put in your refrigerator. So you got to do the work. There's no magic wine, no magic dust. It's all about you. If you look on the front of the book, it has three words up top under minor adjustments. Y'all see it? It says information plus application equals destination. Which one of them words do you think is the most important? Raise your hand. Information. Application. Destination. The most important word is application. If Bill Gates came in here and gave you all his secrets and you never applied them, you won't get his money. The only thing you will get was a headache trying to figure out how he did it. Application is the most important word out of those three words. Because, watch this, if I give you the information like I'm doing now, if you never apply the information, you won't you will achieve or succeed a good destination. But if you take the information I give you and don't apply it, right, you won't get what you want. But if you do apply it, like my father said, son, you're going to end up at a destination. It might not be the one you wanted. And sure enough, I will sit in here over and over. I will go to Salvation Army and train. I start, I, let me tell y'all. I got such a relationship with the Salvation Army that I even got married in one. <laughs> yeah, I, didn't get, I, I went to a Salvation Army. I said, man, I don't know what it is about this Salvation Army. <laughs> I even got married in the Salvation Army. <laughs> yeah, listen. Because I said, man, I'm going back to the Salvation Army so much. Listen, let's just get married. <laughs> and we got married at the Salvation Army. Seriously. <laughs> So today, each group, um, I don't need no microphone, right? Okay. Each group, <laughs> and yo, I'm excited, listen, I'm telling you, I'm pumped up because I, I, I can't say it enough. When I look at you, even though these are female, when I look at you, I see me. And if I did it, I know you can do it. So what I did was put all the things that I've done in the book, and it's called Minor Adjustments. And our model is anywhere but backwards. So each week I'm going to feed you with the same things that I use. And nobody can not come to me and tell me it didn't work. Because it worked for me. And if it worked for me, it'll work for you. You may not apply it. But right now, I'm going to just give y'all the information. All right? Everybody all right? If y'all got any questions, y'all can always raise your hand. Every week, we like to have an um, expectation for the group. This particular week, my expectation is that the individuals here will grab hold of learning 
by repetition. Learning by repetition, all right? It says, Mr. Williams first wrote his first book, Pushed Out the Crack House in the God's House. Again, I'm going to have my books, all eight of my books for y'all to share amongst yourself. Don't keep the books, man. But listen, <laughs> if you leave, just say I'm leaving you, brother, get a man the book back. But I'm going to give y'all all eight of the books so y'all can, you know, read them. And y'all share once, you know, I give them true to the women and y'all get the other six, uh, and you know what I mean? Wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. What happened? Why only two to the women and they get the other six? I don't mean two. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Well, I give y'all, y'all go take all, y'all got one of them, so y'all get seven, and I'll let y'all go take the other seven. Well, most of y'all, some of y'all got one, the other book pushed we'll out. Figure that out. We'll figure it out. But anyway, <laughs> get my book back. But anyway, <laughs> I want y'all to read it so y'all can see certain things, and it's not based on what your spiritual background is. You t I'm talking about a man who can't sit in your seat. How is it possible? I don't know about you. I want to know how is it possible for this man like to change like that? If, 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 if you like me, I'm like, man, hold on. Nah, nah. He breathed like me. I want to know if you like me. But my expectation for this group is everyone will grab hold of the concept of learning by repetition. I'll get back to that. When Mr. Williams first wrote his first book, Pushed Out the Crack House in the God's House, he didn't realize that it would be used for other things. Pushed Out the Crack House, I'm on page 15. Pushed Out the Crack House was his life message that he had shared everywhere he was asked to speak. This workbook is put together with much prayer and hurt heart surgery. Hold on, I need to point out something. You notice where it says, when Mr. Williams first wrote the first, his first book, y'all see that? Do anybody have an idea why I wrote it that way? Why didn't I write, when I first wrote my first book, I'm, I'm going to leave tell you why. The reason why I wrote it like that, because I, I envisioned you teaching it. Get up here. No, don't get up the camera. Don't get there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble. Read. When Mr. Williams first wrote his first book, puts out the crack house, into God's house. Stop. You see, you see how he's able to teach it. If I would have wrote when I first wrote my first book, push, I'm only able to teach it. <clears throat> I wrote it in a way that you can teach it. If I would have put when I first wrote my first book, now if he was reading it and says when I first wrote my first book, he'll be lying. Right? So I wrote it in a way for you. This program ain't about me. I wrote it. God gave it to me for you. I want to see you doing it. Matter of fact, I don't know who it's going to be, but each week I'm going to have one of y'all doing a Mrs. Davis. So don't, don't, don't be sweating at night talking about, is he going to pick me? Is he going to pick me? Because each of y'all might have to read the Mrs. Davis. Thank you. The purpose of this workbook is to teach you how to allow your past to push you into your destiny. The turn crack house. Represents a broken place or a broken person, and the term God house represents something greater. And it is his aim to try to take that brokenness that you have inside and use it to push you into something greater. <clears throat> Mr. Williams' qualification, my past, a total of 22 years inside prisons, county jails, halfway houses, rehab, and I gotta uh, revise this and put salvation armies. Um, an addict for the age of 16 years old to 38 years old. Now pay attention. Repeat, somebody see the next one? What did it say? Repeated failure after failure after failure. Listen, when I say that my expectation is that I need individuals to grab hold of the concept of learning by repetition. I put my repeated failures after failures after failures as my qualification because I learned how to use my failures as my mentor. And in order for you to be successful, you're going to have to learn how to use your failures as your mentor. If you think about a kid and he riding a bike, <laughs> when the kid starts to learn to ride a bike, a bike he gets his first bike, the parent buys his training wheels. So eventually the kid gets tired of these training wheels and he wants to ride a bike. So the parent takes the training wheels off, he gets the kid on the bike, he holds the seat, 
and let the kid go, and the kid falls. Boom! The kid then gets back on the bike and tries again. Let him go, he falls again. Boom! But the kid gets back on the bike again. And the parent is holding the kid. And sooner than the parent let go, and the kid rides off into the sunset. But how did this kid learn how to ride a bike? He learned how to ride a bike by repetition. His repeated failures taught him something new. Your lives are the exact same thing. The failures you had, don't just throw them away. You need to learn something new from your repetition of failure. The kid learned how to ride the bike by repeated failures. But check this out. He not only learned how to ride the bike, he also learned, watch this, how to stay balanced and in motion. Now I said all that to say this. When you're trying to live a new lifestyle and you need to make some minor adjustments, you have to learn how to live a balanced life at the same time living in motion. The kid not only learned how to ride a bike, he had to learn how to stay balanced. When you leave out of here, you're going to have to learn how to stay at the same time. At the same time, in motion. Anywhere but balance. Anywhere but balance. But watch this. There's also one important part that the kid also had to learn. It was the last part. You know what else he had to learn? Come on. He had to learn what? He had to learn what? That's what you got to get. In order for you to be successful, you have to learn by repetition of your repeated failures. Once you learn from your repeated failures, now you have to live your life a balanced life, but you have to live it in motion. But you also have to keep in your mind that you have to stop. There's no more room for you to go back to what you did. The kid, you know for sure, you, you know what, watch this. You know just like the kid knows. When he first got on the bike and learned how to ride, stopping wasn't in his mind. So you know what he did, right? <laughs> he stopped when he fell. He ran into something. Because he wasn't worried about stopping. He was just worried about riding. Right. But once he hit that wall, he said, oh, it's another part I'm dying. <laughs> Hey, tell me about this one. But check this out. I love that. Everybody say learn. Yeah. By repetition. Yeah. Watch this. And I'm applying this to our lives. Check this out. Everybody in here who know how to ride a bike. Check this out. Once you learn how to ride it, you know what nobody never had to teach you again? Ride, ride. Ride. Right now, I declare and I decree. That once you take this program, you'll never have to worry about learning how to ride a bike of recovery again. You're going to get it from this day forward. Every week I'm going to tell you, you're not going to need somebody else to teach you how to ride a bike. Because once we learn how to ride that bike as a kid, we learn it by repetition. And we learn how to stay balanced and in motion. Then we learn how to stop. You can use that same scenario in your own recovery. You can use the same scenario a bike ride. <laughs> Come on, y'all, be a stuff. You'll never look at a bike again, see. <laughs> Did y'all get that? Yes. I always try to use things in my life. I don't like to, I, I, me and my wife always said, we don't like to complicate it. I want to make it as simple as it is. So the Mind Adjustment Program, we don't use, we want to make it real simple. Every time you see a bike, 
You can associate that body with your recovery walk. And the most important part was actually at the end, the stop. You already got the stop part down pat. You just need to learn how to stay balanced. Come on, y'all. Come on. I'm excited, man. I, I don't know, man. I, I, I love Amen. when you find at the conference, whoever was at the conference, the conference, my purpose is greater than your struggle. I'm going to teach that here, too. I, 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 when you find your purpose, right? <clears throat> Nothing helps you, your heart beat more than your purpose. But check this out. I had to come here, and I get off work at 5. I never have a problem getting out of work. It's always 5. I couldn't leave till like 5.30 something. And I said, I told my wife, I'm just laughing, because I'm getting here. I knew that that was just trying to stop me from getting to you. But I'm so focused, I said, we're going. I might have got here at 9 woke up, yo, we got to do the meet. Come on, get up, wake up. <laughs> I said, we getting there, huh? Because I knew that it wasn't about us. It's about you. We had all of us grow up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she ain't, she ain't having that. What's up, glad you made it. All right, present. His present, no, skip that. The things you read in this workbook have been accumulated over the years of his incarceration and addiction, as well as life lessons he learned from others. I have to inform you right now that in this workbook, we, would, we will be dealing with a lot of simplicity. Everybody say simplicity. simplicity. <laughs> Experts say the average person is now bombarded with 35,000 messages a day. Emails, text messages, billboards, television, radio, Twitter, Facebook, blog, etc. It's information overload. People don't need more information. They need to learn how to do what? Information. See that? Listen to me. You already have all the information that you possibly need to be successful. The only thing you need to click is you applying the information you need. Some of y'all got business minds. But you keep playing around with the other stuff that the business mind you have, and I'm the type of individual that I want to spark the business mind that you had before you started doing what you were doing. I want you to get provoked to the point that you always thought about starting a business or something, and you just got away from it. You're skilled and good at a lot of stuff. But I want to spark you to try to assist you to say, you know what? That dream I had, I can achieve it. You can achieve it. And I'm going to come here and try to inspire you to go back to it and dig it back up. If it was your dream, I'm going to talk about that too. It's your dream, then dream big. If it's your dream, the reason why we are doing what we are doing as counselors, teachers, facilitators, or instructors is because we can use we can use what we've been through to help stop someone from taking the same wrong turn we may have taken early in our lives. And if we can reach one man, one woman, or one child, then we'll take that. And maybe that one individual will reach all the others that we couldn't reach. We want to share the good news with the poor. We want to heal the broken We want to proclaim the liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who may be bound. Spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, sexually. And to confront all those, comfort all those who mourn, to give them beauty for the ashes, the joy for their mourning, and the garment of praise, something greater for the spirit of heaviness, brokenness. That they may be called people of righteousness with character instead of people with character instead of criminals and addicts and thugs and etc. Turn to the next page, 18, because I'm going to leave some time for my wife to say something. Um, you know, when my wife got to say something, I usually say, yup, nah, they don't, they don't know about that. <laughs> y'all wouldn't know the retreat, but I'll tell y'all about it. <laughs> I'm real obedient. But anyway, <laughs> I'll let her say something, you know, because we were a team, and um, we, we wore in the spirit. Not only do we wore in the spirit, what I mean by that is things can be happening in our, in our lives, but we're still put on our armor 
and go try to encourage other people, even kids, as while we're going through something. But we got to the point where you know, we want to encourage and help other individuals <coughs> so we don't let what we're going through personally rob you. And it's tough sometimes when you want to cry and try to encourage somebody else's kid or something and you going through something in your own life. But my purpose is greater than my struggles. My purpose is greater than my struggles. So I got to keep going. The first thing you will need to hear have for the process to begin to work is a willing mind. Somebody say a willing mind. <laughs> what do you mean by that? It's up to you to study each unit, like I told y'all, make the necessary adjustments in life that you need and put it into action. Mr. Williams started out drinking beer in the sixth grade, ended up smoking crack cocaine at 38 with other drugs in between. Due to that, he ended up on probation, watch this, then rehab, then parole, then the county jail, then eventually the state prison, and normally those are the steps a lot of us took. And that's called what you call a what? So it's no need to teach you how to go through a process <laughs> because you mastered that. You mastered the process. You mastered a process because you mastered it. But in order for you to get to your true destination, you must first have a willing mind. If you follow the steps in these units, it will produce a change of direction in your life. Each unit in this workbook represents one of those steps that will be a process, something that you have clearly mastered. Our goal, our focus, are always about who? Yeah. yeah. About you. Like you got questions and stuff um, for me, my wife, anything like that. It's always about you. You know what I mean? It's not something that, it's, we come all the way from New Jersey to come out here because We'll go everywhere we go to do our program. It was something that God gave us. But the beauty of our program is, like um, one of our friends, Lanzetta, is teach the program in Atlantic City on Tuesday. You know? So when you got somebody in another part doing another part and you have other people in other parts, that makes it more, <coughs> it's enjoyable for us to enjoy it. So let's see. How to you, our goal and our focus is always about you and what we need you to focus on is how to allow your past to push you into your destiny. But remember, you must be willing to go <laughs> Motivation, remember these things. I, I, I got to bring pins to it. Stuff that come to me, y'all going to have to be writing down. I'm telling you. Because I'm going to say something that's going to spark something in you. You're going to be like, man, you know what? You gotta have ten motivation um, and dedication. Motivation only gets you started. It's your dedication that keeps you going. Someone motivated me, but it was my dedication that keeps me going. They motivated me, like I can motivate you, and that's real. But in order for you to actually succeed, you're gonna have to get dedicated. Motivation plus motivation gets you started. Dedication keeps you going. I'm going to tell you a story about a, um, a bully in the, in the courtyard. Then I'm going to let my wife come up here and, and say some words with them. Next week we'll be um, talking about my favorite subject, purpose. And everybody, again, everybody will have their own particular book because the books is, is for you. You need to write in the book. I need you. <coughs> I need you to write it. So uh, it was a bully. It was a bully and um, he made a list uh, of all the people he could beat. So he broke down his list and everything. Did you get that list back? Oh, did he go? <laughs> no, no, no. He wrote down the list of all the people he could whoop. So the list was going around the courtyard, all around the courtyard. People was like, oh, my name on it. This one particular guy got the list and seen his name on it. So he went over to the bully, said, hey, um, hey, Big Butch. He said, what's up, man? He said, there's a list you got around, you know, of all the people you can walk. And he said, my name on it. You can't walk me. So the, the bully said, man, go get that list. I'll take your name off of it. <laughs> <laughs> now, I said all that to say this. There's a big bully called drug addiction that got your name on it. 
and is walking around talking about he can whoop you. But I came to tell you, you need to tell that bully, take my name off your lips. You can't beat me. You need to tell that drug addiction and tell everybody that's trying to keep you bound that they can't whoop you. You need to confront that bully and tell that bully, somebody say, take my name off your lips. Come on, y'all. Walking around talking with your name on it. And the only reason, only way you can take your name off his list is you have to be willing to go anywhere. Come on, man.
so excited for my husband doing as you as you see he has great enthusiasm. <laughs> and I'm so I'm so excited for him to be here with you because he is an example of you can do it too. You can do I don't care I see anybody, first thing I'm gonna say, listen, my husband can do it, you can do it. Trust me, you can do it, my husband can do it. If any if he can do it, anybody can do it. So I just want to tell you that you can do it. Feed. Absorb, be a sponge, get what you can. Don't, don't kick it to the wayside. You guys got this. You got this. We are a few minutes, so if you have any questions, we're here. Because this was just an introduction, but if you have any questions about anything, anybody? Don't hold up, don't be shy. Well, I just wanted to thank you guys for coming and bringing what you had at the uh, retreat and bringing that here. It's Thank I like you. your shirt, by the way. Yeah, that's a nice shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Uh, I want to know how old are you right now? I'm 47. God bless you. Uh, what part of Jersey are you from? The land of city.